Right, everything's at the same temperature now. Cool. And we'll see what sort of what sort of fit we've got with us. That's the sort of fit I wanted. Goes on, you can feel it dripping. There's no play there at all. So the next thing will be to mark out the hole centers and drill the hole centers in there. There's a few ways of doing it. Uh, one way is to make, it, make some transfer punches to go in there. I haven't got any, I might, uh, I might make some of them or I'll make a sleeve. Make a sleeve and join those two together and transfer a punch through there. Anyway, at least we've, uh, we've managed to make the adapter. I was going to veil that out and weld it, but that's actually locked into there and it's really tight. I really tightened it in. I don't think it'll give me problems. I mean, you don't use a boring head in reverse anyway, so I think I'll just leave it as it is. I've decided to use me the dividing head I built a while ago. to do the indexing on the four bolt holes. That's something you screwed onto the cross slide like that. The three jaw chuck, four jaw chuck, a collet chuck fits onto there. We can line it up to the offset from the centre. It's got a gear on the back so I can index that around to divide it into the four equally spaced parts. Good fit in there, really good fit. That's really nice and true. So if I line that on my head where the camera is, okay, so you can see that that's, that's lined up nicely into there.
I've got an 80 tooth gear here so every 20 teeth every quarter of a turn and that's how I can divide me I can divide the piece up into four to drill the four holes what I'll do I'll nip the gibbs up on the on the cross side so that can't move I've got it set up fairly tight anyway just takes a little nip and that'll, that'll lock it Right, let's lock that up. Right, so I can take the original one out. Put what one we've made in. I put a drill in here. And I can drill, drill a hole. Turn it round 20 teeth, drill in that hole. Then I'm going to have me four holes. It's an 8.5mm drill, which should be enough clearance for me. The cap head bullet. Right, so basically, the distance we've set is the centre line of that to the centre line of the lathe. This particular hole I can't break through one because there's nothing there's nothing behind it. Right, that's a throw. I'll counterbore that for the cap head to sit into now that it's all set up. Right, so basically we've got a flat bottom drill. That's a drill which is sharp a bit like a milling cutter. I've got the lathe running back here nice and slow. Two hundred. Three hundred. Hopefully you can see the end of the drill there. It's just been squared off with a very, very small amount of lead on it. Very similar to a milling cutter. I've got a few of these, are all old imperial drills. They've been sharpened like this to make counter bores for all the metric cap head bolts I use. Right, so now we need to count round 20 teeth, 20, 40, 60, 80. So 20 teeth, which is going to be there. Then you're going to have 40, then 60. That will go over four divisions. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a tip X mark on that one so I can't loss where I started from. Right, we've got our tip X. Twenty, that one. Well I'll do I'll mark all fault and we're kinda go we kinda go wrong can we? Right so I marked out okay well I marked out every twenty teeth. What I could have done I put, could have put a compound gear on here, a 40, and that every half turn there would have been the right amount on there. But for simplicity, we'll just do it this way. So now, we'll pull our deed end out, in there, loosen off, our spindle, turn it, so our deed end drops into there, lock up our spindle, that's quarter of a turn, simple as that. You can put a gear train on the back of here, so you can actually divide into any, basically any number you want. Not quite as accurate as a worm type dividing head, but when you consider it costs nothing at all to make, it, uh, it's quite a handy tool. Right, we'll put the drill back in. 
We can go right through with this one as well. It's going to miss the, going to miss the chuck jaw. Plenty of cooking oil. Using my, using my spindle lock out to a dead end, and then we're round to the next, the next one, which is in your bastard, which is there. Certainly looks good. Let's take it out. Looks very good on the back. Just as he rock. Derag them holes. Doesn't want to fit in because it's it's warmed up. I tell you what it is, they are absolutely they look good. That won't go in there because it's warmed up with machine in it. I'll derag them, get some boots and we'll try it in. Need to machine the, the heads of the allen bolts down to fit the counter bore. Need 40 thou off, 20 thou cut, I don't want cut. These are very hard, touch it off, I don't want two cuts. 10, set aside, that's 20. Right, the moment of truth. Looks good. I do not think it'll get much better than that. The 8.5mm holes, there's just enough clearance. What I'll do before I put it together, I'll just put some decent grease inside it, just on the on the operating mechanism in there. A little bit of grease won't do any harm, I'm sure. Make sure the faces are all. Nice and clean. Bolt heads are a really good fit in the in the counter bars. There's very little movement on it there now, if any. Right, I think that should do the job. It certainly looks the part. I've enjoyed making that. 
And what I'll do, I'll do one more video. I'll put it in the middle of the machine, put a clock on, see how accurate it's actually running. And then we'll bore some holes. How will they play with the, the snap gauges at Stephen Centres?